Well, it's, it's been maybe two weeks or so, and uh, since I started writing these words down, and uh, I believe they're fitting for what God wants done in His house and what God wants done today. So our key text found in 1 Corinthians 3.5. Who then is Paul? Who then is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as many as God gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Praise the Lord. Amen. Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, Neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. You know what it says there? Not alone, but they are one. Paul and Apollos are one. Their work was one with the Corinthians. They were out doing the same ministry, the same, spreading the same gospel message to these Corinthians. They are one. Paul laid the foundation. Apollos came in later and watered it. They are one. They had the same goal in mind. Praise the Lord. How many want to have the same goal in mind? How many want to be on the same page? I want to be working I don't want to be planting no seed and then someone, no, someone not coming around watering or watering in a different spot. You got to water where the seed's, where the seed's at. Amen? Amen? One means that their work was one. One is just as necessary as the other. If no one was there to water, what's the point of planting the seed if no one's there to water it? And vice versa, if one planted the seed but no one is there to water it, what good is that seed? And then on verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm to, I'm, that's all you guys. I'm talking to all of you. You are God's husbandry. You are God's farm. You are God's, God's farm hands. You are his building. You are his contractors all out there. We got a lot of contractors I know. I wonder, is that maybe just by coincidence? I don't know. You got a lot of skilled people that work with their hands. You are God's building this day. And you read what verse 9 right there. Ye are laborers together with God. And I think, God, I thought I was working for you this whole time. Which in a way, yes, I am. He is the master. I, I am the servant. We are all servants. He is the master. But Lord, right here, you're saying, God, with you. With you. This is the Lord's work. How many here know that it's the Lord's work and the Lord has a big field and the Lord knows how to discern the hearts and he knows how to divide the wheat and the tares and you, I, you and I don't know how to do any of that. Save the spirit of God that's in us. Amen? Amen. But we are his work with him. How many here want to be with God? Uh, Lord, I want to work right side by side with you. I want to take the shovel hand in hand with you. Not just for you. Not just because you told me to do it, but Lord, you're right here in the midst with those that are willing to take up that shovel and start digging. Willing to take up that water and spout and start watering that seed that's been planted. I want to be one of those people. That's what this message is about. I want to be one of those people because that's the only work. It's the only work that matters. I can start working for a lot of people. How many here work for somebody? Anybody? How many here work for themselves? You're, you're working for somebody. How many here want to work with the only one that matters? And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed be his name. You see, I can labor. 
I can labor after many things. I can labor after career. I can labor, labor after romantic love. I can labor after monetary things. But Lord, you're asking me to this day to labor at your work. Because it's the only work that matters. Nothing I do in this world that I do for myself or for anything else in regards to this world is not going to matter a hill of beans. Only thing I do is I, that I do, I do for you. Today, what I feel is God's calling out for a dream job. He's put a message out on Indeed for a job for each of you. Come and work with me. That's the call that I feel that the Lord wants to make today. Come and work with me. And the question is, am I going to dismiss it? Dismiss that notification? Say, oh, I, don't, I got a job. How many here got a job? I got a job. How many here got uh, things they need to do throughout the day? Oh, well, I got things I got to do throughout the day. I, well, you know, what's, what's really the benefit in working with the Lord? Was there a bit? I'm tired. I don't like to, to uh, do any type of manual labor. I don't want to do any of this type of work. And you saying I got to labor? The word labor just goes against the very grain of my body. I don't like the word labor. Labor and Garrett don't go together. In fact, how many here are working to not labor anymore? Yeah. <laughs> amen. All right. We got a lot of amens on that one. I'm working to not labor anymore, Lord. And you're asking me, you're calling out to me. You're sending the message out on Indeed so I can come and labor for you. Oh, Lord, what's, what's the benefits? How, if anybody would dare ask the Lord what's the benefits, that would be just crazy to me. Because how many here know there's some benefits before we read them, because we're going to read them, that there's some benefits in working and laboring for him, with him. Amen. Amen. There is some. Uh, well, you know, I don't, uh, uh, I don't like the other company employees. So, Lord, I don't really, I don't know if I want to work with you. One, I'm working with the Lord, God Almighty, creator of all things, right? That's got to be a plus, a high plus. It doesn't matter who else is on the right or left or in the front or the back. Because if we're all the self-same spirit, if we're all Paul and, or Apollos, we are all one. Amen? And one is maybe laying the foundation, but praise the Lord, there is someone coming behind that's watering it. Someone's laying that seed down, but praise the Lord, there's somebody has to come by. Somebody has to come by. That seed that just can't sit there. Lord, help me, oh God. Help me, Lord, find find the strength and the courage to water what's already been planted in this house. Because there's many seeds that have already been planted. Many, many prophecies, many, many promises, many, many things and foundations that have already been laid, praise the Lord, that we've had some great and mighty, wonderful elders that have laid a perfect foundation. But who's going to water it? Who's going to be there to water it? You know, I, I, I did a quick search on Google for some of the reasons people leave or quit their job. You guys want to hear some of them? And these are, these are good people. Number one, or not number one, but one of the top reasons is their relationship with their boss. That's why I leave the company or in whatever, find a new job. Now, let me hear it, know who the boss is. That's Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen? How many here have a relationship that is in agreement with the Lord? Amen. You know, I'm pretty sure Brother Thomas just preached the message saying, Lord, I want to pray and ask in your will. Lord, give me some foresight before I even open my mouth and start speaking that maybe some other things got to get taken care of first in my heart and in my mind and in my soul before I ever come before you and start asking all these other petitions. I got a relationship. I want to make sure I have the right relationship with the Lord. And he's the boss. Amen. Yeah. Number two, 
One of the other reasons, I'm bored or unchallenged by work. How many here move on because they're just bored and unchallenged by work? Well, in fact, I'm looking for a job to where I can just sit in the corner and do nothing. That is pretty boring. But no, most, one of the reasons why people leave and quit and find a new job is, well, I'm bored and I'm unchallenged at work. And you know what the rest of these examples all come down to? They all come down to pride. It's all about me, 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 and what I want, and my needs, and I'm bored, and I need to be challenged, and, well, what is, what's happening for me at this place or at this task or at this activity? One of the other reasons is uh, opportunities to use skills and abilities elsewhere. Well, I'm a big shot, and I know a thing or two about a thing or two, and you know what? So I'm going to go find some other company or some other workplace to, to uh, heighten my abilities because it's all about me, and I'm the big guy, and I'm the guy on top, and I want to make sure everybody knows that I'm the big guy and I'm the guy on top. What it all comes down to is pride. Pride, Lord, let me not have pride today. Let me not have pride when it comes to your work. Let me not think that, that Lord, I have a better way to build this building than you, O oh God. Let me not think that, well, Lord, I'm a master craftsman. And I can do these things, and I can build this house, and I can uh, uh, cultivate this farm, and, and nurture this farm, and harvest th this farm, because I'm really, really good at it. And in fact, you should get rid of everybody else, because I'm just so good at it. In fact, if you don't use me, I'm going to go somewhere else and just cultivate some other farm or, some, or harvest some other farm. Lord, let me not have that this day. And in verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another buildeth thereon. Isn't it funny that Paul just refers to himself as a wise master builder? Hey, I'm a wise master builder and I laid this foundation. Well, Paul, man, that sounds a little bit conceited, don't you think, Paul? I mean, come on, buddy. But you know what? I like he prefaced it the right way. According to God's grace. Amen? According to God's grace. According to grace. Paul didn't earn anything. Paul wasn't just super skilled because he was just super skilled. But God... According to his grace, just gave him the abilities, gave him the talent, gave him the architect plan, and said, go and build that foundation. And according to God's grace, he built it. And he built it wisely. And later on in, the, in chapter 3, it says, uh, verse 18, Let no man deceive himself, and any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. And that's how Paul was able to say, I'm a wise master builder because he came, became a fool. Praise the Lord. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. But let me finish off uh, verse 10 there. And this is what I, uh, what I really feel to say. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Let every man and every woman in this place take heed on how you build upon that foundation that has been laid. Praise the Lord. I, gotta, I, gotta, I can't just willy-nilly because I'm a good carpenter, because I'm a, a good farmer, willy-nilly just start building all this stuff. Well, it's got to be good. Look, I'm, I'm building it, right? I'm doing something, right? It's got to be good. I want the closet over there, and that's a good-looking closet. I mean, like a big master closet. You know, I think it should be 30 by 30. Like any, any woman in here want a 30 by 30 master closet. Just lined up with rows of just clothes, and you just push a button, and, just, and it just goes to the right color. You enter it in blue. That would be pretty cool. And in blue, all the blue dresses come. That would be pretty awesome, right? That's a good idea, so I'm going to start building that. Right? That's a good idea. Take heed. Take heed. That's what Paul's saying to these Corinthians. Take heed that every man know what he buildeth thereupon. I got to know, I got to build upon the right foundation, the only foundation, which is Jesus Christ, which we'll read here in a minute. And I got to build wisely upon that foundation. Take heed. 
You know, 2 Corinthians 3.3, 3, For as much as ye are manifested, declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of thy heart. You are living epistles. How many here remember camp in 2019 when my good mentor, Brother Hal, gets up there and says, you are a living epistle. You are all the letters. You are all those words. You know, how many, how many uh, books did uh, Paul write? I don't know. I didn't look it up. What, two-thirds of the New Testament or however many books that is? Let's say 10, 15, something in there maybe. I don't even know. Guess what? There's 70 letters right here. Of those that, are, that have been uh, baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, there's 70 letters right in here. 70 letters, 70 epistles, not written with man's ink, but by the Spirit of Almighty God. Praise the Lord. Praise you are that living epistle. You are that testimony. Well, I don't really know how to do the work. I don't really know what I should do. I don't really know how to build. I don't even know the references that you're referring to when you say a closet and a two by four and a header over here and that kind of thing. All you got to know is your testimony and what God has done for you. Amen. All you got to know is how much the Lord has ministered to you and has worked miracles in your life and has blessed you and has kept you and has lifted you up. And I can just walk outside with that testimony, with that living epistle and that letter so that all may read, so that all may know, so that all may, and Lord, I'm laboring. I'm letting people read of your goodness and your mercy, and your love towards me. How many want to let people read that? Yeah. How many want to just show that, hey, everybody, let me tell you what God has done for me. We even with, even with some drums, shout it out loud, right? Amen. But, Brother Jeff, he's getting me back for asking to play. I'll get him back. <laughs> no. You have a salvation story. You are that living epistle, and God is asking, are you going to build upon it? Are you going to build upon the seed that's been planted? I know that Brother Keegan's, a man I barely knew, has planted some seeds, amen? amen. I know Brother he's, uh, Hensley has planted some seeds, amen? amen? I know that Brother Don has planted some seeds, amen? amen. And I, am I going to, as the next generation or just anybody down the line, it doesn't matter what generation, am I going to let that seed just sit there? And then, oh, well, that was his work. Well, that was Paul's work. Paul, you take care of the Corinthians. No, Paul's had to come on in after him. Let me water. And in fact, I think even Peter came in. Oh, let me water some more. Let me... Let me, oh, I know Paul laid down a seed. I know Brother Keegan's laid down a seed. I know Brother Don laid down a seed. I know all these great elders have laid down seeds and seeds and seeds and seeds. And it's, it's my job. It's my labor. It's what the Lord is asking me to do. It's what the Lord has convicted my heart time and time again throughout the past two weeks. Will you labor? Will you work at what is most important? Or will you work for another? Will you work for yourself? Or will you work with me? That's, my, that's the call that I feel the Lord's he's making to me. Anyways, I'm sorry I've got to share it with you too. He's making. Verse 11. For, uh, for other foundations can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Everyone in here, and all the work that you've done all throughout your life, and that you're going to do, it's going to be tried with fire. You think, well, I did these great and wonderful exploits and these things. The true judge is the Lord, and it will be tried by fire. And that which stands, that one shall receive a reward. Praise the Lord. How many here want a reward for their labor? 
because you labor not in vain. Amen. I'm not going to labor in vain. I, when I come in here and serve the Lord, I don't labor in vain because what I'm doing, I'm doing it unto him. And that labor is going to earn its reward. But if I build it, I have to build wisely. I have to take heed. And I have to build upon that foundation, which is Jesus Christ. The revelation of who he is. For he certainly is God manifested in the flesh. For God is one and Jesus is God. He is the prophesied Messiah that was come. And except you build upon that. And that fact that he came and he died for each and every one of us. And that gospel message is preached to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You build upon that. That is the one true foundation that will stand. You build on anything else. It's not even a foundation. And there's plenty of other scriptures that read it won't stand in the days to come. Because that is the rock. That is the rock that will stand in the days to come. Right, verse 14. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Blessed be thy name, Jesus. There's a reward awaiting for you. If any man's work shall be burned, verse 15, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. All that work and all that labor could all be lost and suffer harm. And then myself, I myself have got to go through the fire. What you have done in this life will either stand the test of fire or it won't. Today, I wanted to stand the test of fire. And I know the ingredients this day. I know, Lord, I got to build upon the foundation, oh Lord. I know I got to answer the call that you are making, oh Lord. The choice is up to me. The choice is up to you, right? Read in Matthew 9, 37, Then he saith unto the disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. And in John 4, Jesus saith unto him, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. How many's meat, how many's nourishment, how many's desire is to do the will of him that sent, him, sent you? And I'll tell you, the one that sent you is the Lord God Almighty. My meat and my nourishment and my goal in life is to do that. Say ye not, there are yet four months, then come with the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look unto the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto eternal life. Those are the benefits of working with the Lord right there. You're going to receive wages and fruit unto eternal life life. That, and that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And, the, and herein is this saying true. One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap whereupon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye entered into their labors. There's a lot of great men that have gone before each of us. Amen. There's a lot of men that, that have laid that seed, that have labored. Who here is going to reap those labors of where I sowed not? They sowed it. They planted it. Who's going to reap it? That promise, right, that is written, I didn't look the scripture up, but written in Hebrews, I believe that you make them perfect. You fulfill the promises that they which all started and the prophets of old, that's what Jesus was talking about here. All the prophets of old have sowed this thing. And disciples, it's up to you to reap it. 2,000 some odd years ago, he said the harvest is white. Is it still white today? Do I still think it's white today? Do I still think there's a purpose today? Do I still pursue after it like it's everything I need in life? Like it's everything I want to do in life? Because, Lord, what you have for me is everything that I want. What you have for me to do, whatever labor it is that you want me to do, Lord, that's what I want to do. Not this other thing. I don't want to work for somebody over here. I don't want to work for my wife. She's my boss, actually. I don't want to work for her no more, Lord. 
Lord, I want to work for you. Lord, I want to work. I keep saying it wrong. Lord, I want to work with you. You're asking me to work with you. Lord, let me not. Let me not get so sidetracked on what I think is important. I think, you know, I feel like every time, or at least 90% of the time I get up here, I always say the same things. You guys ever find that to be true? I always talk about the Bible. It's interesting. I don't know why. You've you got to change it up every once in a while. No, but I always talk about, Lord, you are most important. Lord, you are my number one. And Lord, my labor for you should be my number one. Amen? Amen. That's what God's asking me today. I started, I wrote this down two weeks ago, and I wrote down Brother Don's name. And I wrote down to finish that work that other men have planted, that other men have sowed. And I wrote that down, and I thought, oh, Lord, how can I? He, he did a great job. What do you mean? What, do you, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to throw a little water on it, son. You're supposed to keep at it, son. You're supposed to keep going. It wasn't just Paul all by himself, but Apollos and Peter, maybe, they all showed up later. And they worked together. It was hand in hand. And who is Apollos? Who is Paul? Who are all these elders? None of it all matters because we were all one with Jesus Christ. And to him, he's the one that gets the glory because he's the one that gave the increase. What shall I do? Can I answer the call this day? One last scripture in verse Corinthians 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, there's a reward waiting and it's not for nothing. I may have been toiling all the night. I may have been toiling for all these years. As I mentioned, Brother Jeff, been singing for 40 some odd years, I think. 40 some odd years toiling at that. His labor is not in vain. Brother Jeff, sorry, I'm going to use you as an example. His labor is not in vain. <laughs> His labor is not in vain. He's building upon that foundation. He's building upon that. He's watering that. He's getting out there, letting my heart be a living epistle. In whatever way, shape, or form, O oh Lord, help me, O oh God, this day to water what has been planted in this ministry. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand?